Thank you. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, this regularly scheduled meeting of the Finance Committee of the Board of Architectural and Engineering Examiners is taking place in 308 Feathergill Hall at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. And notice of this committee meeting was posted on the board website on September 25, 2017. Uh, roll call. Susan Ballard. Robert Campbell. Blair Parker. Here. Rick Thompson. Here. You do not have a quorum, but you may discuss. Thank you. And Robert Campbell is in the building. I'm assuming he'll be in here shortly. And we'll, we will announce for the record when Mr. Campbell arrives. Yes. Sounds good. Well, as chairman of this committee and, and uh, first time chairing this committee and uh, going through the, the, the financial information we have in front of us is, is actually interesting uh, for me because it is my first time of really fully going through it and understanding it. I believe on page 85 is the spreadsheet that uh, shows the, it's the, the full financial report. And John, I'm going to if you would. Oh, Mr. Campbell has arrived. I'm sorry. You now have a quorum. Thank you. John, I wonder if you could take a few minutes and take us through this. And sure. Do it All right. Extremely well. So you said, uh, actually page 84 is the summary report. This is just for the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2017. We don't have the final report for fiscal year 17 yet, ending on June 30th. Uh, actually, our um, accounting person in our division is working on the final reports as we speak. So I'll probably get it in the next few days, but we'll, we'll have that available at the December meeting. So some of the uh, numbers on this report are estimates at this point, but they're estimates that our accounting, um, well, I forget his title, but our accounting person has provided. So they should be pretty accurate. Estimates. Um, our licensing revenue for the fourth quarter um, increased about 25000 from the fourth quarter of last fiscal year, so our revenue has been consistent. And the estimated state regulatory fee for this year, uh, which is calculated as a revenue deduction, is $107,000, a little more than last year. And, and basically, if you don't know what that is, it's Five dollars per licensee that's paid to the Department of Finance and Administration. I think that fee was established back in the 80s, so it's been around a long time. And I think just about every um, audit we have of rate boards, the Comptroller's Office recommends that that fee be reevaluated, and it, it never is. Um, it's been set at five dollars for a really long time, so uh, we're not. I'm not entirely sure what that's for, but it is a revenue deduction. Um, it's, it's based on the number of licenses issued in a year. So that, that's the purpose of that fee. Um, so with that deducted, our total revenue for the fourth quarter is um, $284,170. You see, that's estimated at this point. As far as expenditures go, they're, they're largely consistent with the fourth quarter of the previous fiscal year. Um, In-state travel expenses decreased a little bit, out-of-state increased a, a very small amount. Um, state professional services decreased about $4,300. So overall, direct expenditures decreased about $5,500. So again, remaining very consistent with the previous fiscal year. And after deduct deducting the estimated cost backs, and those are um, fees that are paid to the department, um, our investigations unit, legal, and also for our customer service center. Here we have a centralized customer service center now. Those costs at the end of the year are, are allocated based on um, a formula that's been developed by the administration number of cases for the customer service center, the number of calls we receive, things like that to try to equitably distribute those costs among the different programs within the department. So with, with those, the estimated cost backs are about $250,000. So once those are deducted, that gives us a year-to-date reserve balance of close to $300,000, which will give us an accumulated reserve of 
close to $2 million, about $1.9 million. But that could change a little bit when you get the final report in December. Those cost backs could fluctuate. So. John, yeah. let me ask you a question yeah. on the cost back. Do you expect, are, are you going to get a rent reduction based on the amount of office space that you are going to be That's a good uh, question. not using? Now? We should, you're right, because with us going to the, the work from home uh, yes. system now, they, they call it AWS, Alternative Workspace Solutions. Um, eventually, we're no longer going to have much assigned office space. Most of us are going to be, um, what do they call that, um, where you don't have an assigned space? Yeah, we're, we're going to share space with other programs. We'll still have a small space to keep our supplies and records and things, but most of us are going to be sharing space. So yeah, you're right, we should, whenever that's implemented, we should see a reduction in our rent. Okay. I would assume. Would you have an increase? However, in um, cost for communication, uh, the, the, the system that you connect into and so on? I don't on. think so. I don't think we'll see any change there. I mean, you would think that if whoever evaluated this looked at and said it's cheaper to have okay. people at home than it is to have, I mean, yeah. the cost of telecommunication and computers and all that's cheaper than the rent paid, yeah. uh, or why do it? I mean, right. Sure. Yeah, but, but we haven't implemented that. I understand, but, yet. but you I, see maybe next year's budget. We're going to do right. that. But yet yeah. at some point, they're going to have to reconfigure our office space. And we're no longer going to have those assigned mm -hmm. cubicles and offices. So I'm sure that will have some impact on that. That probably had to be at some point with like a computer on one of those little things you stand on and drive around. <laughs> Segway? Segway, yeah. <laughs> okay. We won't even be in the office building. We'll be out on the, we'll be out on the side going up down public right-of-ways with headphones on going, yes, can we help you? Yeah. Good day. With an umbrella over. I mentioned this in the grants committee meeting. Um, our legal cost um, could potentially go up some next year because of a difference in how those are being calculated right now they're discussing down too? Um, we just don't know yeah right now it's based on the number of cases largely and since a and e has a very small number of cases compared to most but a lot of the programs in the division we, we bear a small portion of that expense but our cases are more complex usually so we have you know, we're factoring in rule making and all that now, so it's potentially with those could go up some, but I wouldn't anticipate uh, a, a major increase there. Customer service center, I, you know, I don't really know how that's going to pan out. They're, they're adding staff, so I would expect that to go up significantly from what's reflected here. Here it's estimated only $7,300, which seems pretty low considering the number of staff they have. I think they have eight presently eight staff and we're about we're about five percent of their business I think overall for the whole division because the bulk of that pie is that's the real estate commission the contractors board uh, private protective services I think those are the big three um, and we're about I think typically we run about five percent of that customer service pie that they, they send us a graphic every week and that's usually where we're at so i, I don't know if that's if that's reflected with five percent of their expenses or not but anyways so we're, we're still our revenue looks good expenditures are staying consistent and we're st we still have a surplus so that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's great in a nutshell and there's nothing that we can foresee in the future that that is going to be a Create a significant change. Yeah. Now there is there is a possibility that um, you know, we may see some uh, more uh, cost backs down the road for our licensing system. Um, I think a couple of years ago they they drew out. I don't have that number with me, but they drew out uh, a significant amount to pay for our new licensing system, and they recently initiated a new contract with the vendor to make some other changes to the system. So we may see 
I, I guess next fiscal year some money allocated for that purpose but again I don't, I don't think that's going to be a, a large amount that would have much of an impact on us based on the surplus that we have okay. so we're not in danger of running in the red right time soon for sure John what do you see as a following up on our discussion with the um, grants are there other do we need to look at other our fees on other things to see if there's a way to potentially reduce something that doesn't do that in advance of what this grant discussion uh, yeah. to prepare ourselves do we do you see any of those or do you just want to send those to us to let us look at uh, kind of a, a fee sheet of what all you know we've got renewals and all that does that yeah. sound um, legitimate yeah I included that last year but usually we try to look at the fees at least every couple of years yeah. so I looked at it last year I didn't include it this year but I, I, I could have but I can send that out to you that comparing our fees with other states and then we could I think just give us revenue broken down by yeah, for me I th and that might be good for other states too but definitely just seeing what we charge because if we're going to try to have this potentially a discussion on raising the, the uh, grants yeah. maybe in a year or so I think now is probably a good time to start laying the groundwork to go do that and say, hey, we could ten bucks here or what or yeah, yeah. I think we we can definitely do that. I think that's it would be very feasible. Yeah. I'd like to have the information to get at least to start laying the, yeah start laying the groundwork a little bit to us internally before we kind of start having that big discussion. Yeah, yeah. I can send that information out. I think Frank said he wanted to increase it by a million dollars. Is that what you said? Yep. That's what I thought. <laughs> I may have the record wrong. We'll have to go back over the record. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he said. <laughs> okay, it's not what he said. You know, we <laughs> talked about that last year. Y'all decided. We're to only eliminate the engineer intern fee. I mean, you could have done more than that. Oh, I understand. <laughs> but I think we were also, last year, we were still <laughs> unsure of, in mean, FE, we weren't sure of what path it was going to take going forward either. You know, because they let, we, we were down, and we really hadn't started to come up, I think, at some, we thought we might come in up. the exam volume? Exam volume, so. I think now we've kind of reached a little bit more of a steady state. We can make a little bit better decision on that. Yeah. If my that's my memory, which may, may that, my that's, me that's never going to be a source of revenue for us. Well, that's true, yeah. but it never. portends future stuff sometimes. Yeah. It seems like a lot of um, individuals who pass the FE exam now just don't even apply for certification. Looks like. Hmm. I think certification is becoming less sought after and desirable, maybe. People just don't see a need for it for the most part. Like they once did. Well, you, well the way it was set up before, I mean it was kind of like it was mandatory. Because they had to come to the board for authorization to sit. Yep. And once they pass, we had their application, we automatically issued an engineering entrance certificate, whether they wanted it or not. They got a certificate. Most of them probably didn't want it. They just threw it away. Or anything. <laughs> Who knows where their certificate is? But now they actually, after they pass the exam, they have to apply to us for the certificate. So the only ones applying are the ones that really want that certificate, maybe for employment purposes or yeah. whatever. So I think a lot of them are just, especially if they go into industry where they don't need licensure, value licensure, they're not even applying for that certificate. Which is not a big deal because yeah. we don't require it anymore to become a PE. All we care about is did they pass the FE? Not whether they got a certificate from us. Okay, does anybody have any any additional uh, questions, thoughts, concerns about the financial data in front of us? Oh, I should mention too, our regular salaries will increase a little bit in the next fiscal year because we did reclassify some positions in our office. A lot of our positions were 
regulatory board administrative assistant one position and we got those reclassified this year to regulatory board administrative assistant two positions uh, which make, makes the, our those positions i think more um, consistent with other boards and commissions within our division a lot of them had already been reclassified as administrative assistant too so they get they get a, um, a slight salary increase with that it's not not a significant <laughs> amount but you know little raise we, we do what we can um, so but that'll be reflected in the report for next year too but it, again that's not going to be enough to put us in the red or anything Phillips even bought a paper today <laughs> now Wada's position is not changed or is it still administrative manager but the other we had four positions in the office where the classifications were changed so anyway all right and uh, next under new business we have proposed proposal to increase grants appropriation and I believe in the previous committee meeting uh, it was decided that we would not pursue that this year. Correct. So, that that said, any additional uh, business to discuss? So, I entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> 